particularly also as a sponsor, um, and I did want to take a, a minute to shout out to the sponsors of the symposium, which include uh, EDCO, uh, who's been recognized in the past through these uh, conferences, um, San Diego Environmental Services, Goodwill, uh, City of Chula Vista, County of San Diego, Dr. Bronner's, which you mentioned, Waste Management, Republic, um, Let's see, who else? Uh, Mattress Recycling Compo uh, um, Council is here, the Compost Group, the Carton Council, Sure Clothes, and of course, CRA. Did I miss anybody, Rick? Nope, I don't okay, think good. so. Okay, good, good. Well, thank you all for sponsoring this uh, symposium and um, we are celebrating you all today. I'm gonna go through what we cover in the zero waste training on zero waste communities and also businesses and institutions. There are zero waste communities all across the country. Um, over um, 100 in the US have zero waste resolutions or have adopted zero waste uh, goal through the Urban Environmental Accords. Most of these are through um, uh, are in California, but of course we have a smattering all over the country, including a big concentration in, um, in Colorado and in Montana, thanks to Jeremy and in Florida, thanks to uh, Amanda. And we're just gonna be keeping moving the movement all across the country. Uh, we will have a little ways to go before we reach the level of zero waste Italy, where over 300 municipalities in Italy uh, are, have um, declared a goal of zero waste and are really working hard towards that goal. Many of them taking really seriously. We uh, visited uh, the beautiful Tuscan town of Caponeri in Tuscany, and they are at 90% at, at the citywide level and um, really just designing waste out of the system and working very hard on the road to zero waste. We have zero waste communities around the world. Um, I just wanted to show a few examples from the C40 cities who have declared uh, a zero waste declaration. Uh, the Mother Earth Foundation in the Philippines also recognizes cities working towards zero waste and Zero Waste Europe, which is also a partner of Zero Waste International Alliance recognizes cities working towards zero waste. So um, we are part of a worldwide community and we're so glad you all are here joining us. I wanted to talk a little bit about our community standards. This is sort of a worldwide recognition of how we recognize zero waste communities. Uh, we ask them to adopt the goal of zero waste to landfills, incinerators, and the environment, and develop a plan and a timeline. This little plan actually is from, um, this uh, line is from uh, the city of Austin, Texas, which is a leader in zero waste. They are um, on the road, uh, they're making um, big strides, and they do have a, a goal of 90% uh, by um, 2040. So that's uh, going to be kind of a uh, uh, amazing journey. <laughs> uh, here's an example of why we need to focus on waste prevention, because so much of our stuff, right, that is currently going to the landfill is not recyclable. We cannot recycle our way out of this system. It's important to recycle, it's important to compost, uh, but it's, and it's important to reuse, but we really do need to reduce waste, um, you know, in order to have a more sustainable, healthy environment. This is an example from a waste audit in Camponeri, which is in uh, Italy, and they are really looking at what's remaining in their landfill materials to design it out of the system. So they made a, uh, an agreement with Lavazio, which is their local, um, their, their, in their Italian uh, you know, coffee company that has, produces these pods, these coffee pods. And they worked with uh, Lavazia to develop a reusable option for the coffee pods, which are now available. Uh, we're seeing that more and more uh, across the US, what was really a scourge to zero wasters, we now see uh, we can still use our uh, coffee makers with reusable pods, which is great. And it's an example of how zero waste communities can really work to lead the way. We ask zero waste communities to invest in physical infrastructure, the collection and processing, very important. Source separate as much as possible. Really cool to see what um, Dr. Bronner is doing on the, on the, uh, on the separation uh, part. And then we ask them to invest in local zero waste infrastructure through um, social infrastructure, training and education. And this is a picture of Miss Alameda, who is part of the Community Action for Sustainable Alameda up in the Bay Area. And she ran for um, Miss California in 2010. And um, 
wow, she's still uh, working on uh, zero waste training and education throughout the Bay Area and uh, soon across the uh, state. Want to talk a little bit about zero waste businesses and institutions. We uh, look for leadership there and oftentimes in a community, those are the ones who step up first. It's sometimes difficult for community leaders and city staff to envision uh, zero waste at the community level, but the businesses typically lead the way. Here are some examples of businesses that are leading the way to zero waste that have achieved 90% uh, diversion from incinerators and landfills. Many of these have been um, recognized and certified by True Zero Waste, which is a part of the LEAD US Green Business uh, uh, Building Council um, program. Uh, and, uh, lead, and this uh, program started out, the True Zero Waste um, program started out as the US uh, Zero Waste Business Council founded by uh, Gary and Ricker here. Uh, so thank you guys. How can businesses minimize wasting? As you heard the example from Kevin, rethinking first. What are we throwing away that we can redesign? What can we do? Um, the green team at uh, Dr. Bronner is puzzling these sort of thing. What can we do to redesign our system so that we can reduce and minimize wasting? And then we refuse to bring uh, things that can't be recycled or composted or reused into our facility. And then finally, we reduce, reuse, recycle, of course. But um, really thinking about design, system design, is how we get to zero waste in a business. Businesses save money by product and process improvements, eliminating wasting, higher diversion, and more recycling and reuse, recycling, and composting. This is a slide from um, uh, Rico, which is a manufacturer of uh, copier machines and uh, electronics. This is their zero waste production approach, which is to absolutely refuse buying anything that's unnecessary and then returning packaging and products to um, their suppliers, reducing waste at the source, reducing and of course recycling and composting. Here's just a, a snapshot from the true zero waste rating, rating system where um, businesses can and institutions can earn points and get to that um, uh, 80, 80 points gets you uh, certified as a zero waste. And I think it's important to acknowledge here that it's more than just about um, getting to that high diversion number or that zero waste to landfill number. It's also about leadership and training and upstream management. And, and to get those higher and higher levels of points, you really have to show how you are gonna reinvent your business for zero waste. So that, that is a really high, high bar. And uh, here are the zero waste business standards from Zero Waste International Alliance. Commit to the triple bottom line, use the precautionary principle, which is really about not investing in something that you don't know is uh, going to be bad for the environment. So, right, you know, be cautious when you're purchasing new things in, in, uh, and use that precautionary principle. Uh, do not import harm. Uh, zero waste to landfill or incineration. Take responsibility for your products and packaging through um, take backs. Buy reused, recycled, and composted. We can't close the loop on um, zero waste un unless we are buying back recycled content materials. Prevent pollution and reduce waste. Strive for highest and best use for materials and use economic incentives for customers and workers. Produce services that are sold and are not wasteful or toxic and use non-production um, uh, systems in your manufacturing. Required separation at the source, right sizing, meaning really look at what's being collected and not only um, measure what you're going to disposal or landfill, but also measure what you're recycling and composting and reduce that as well. Toyota has a, a phrase that they love to use. First, we recycle more. And then we recycle less because we've, we've found out where we're wasting uh, effort in recycling and reducing and, re, uh, and, and focused on reusing. Uh, we really look for product policies on take backs and uh, extended producer responsibility and other product policies to reduce the volume and toxicity of, of goods, designing products for the environment, including things like connecting the cap on bottles or connecting the the, the little pull-off lids on, um, on aluminum cans. Uh, when I was a kid, you could see that on the beaches, little uh, tabs from aluminum cans all littered the beaches. Now we see other things that we need to reinvent and find solutions for. 
And then of course, design for the dump, we don't want that. As a, the example that from Contapanari, we really wanna make sure that businesses and institutions are investing in solutions as well. We wanna ask you to purchase for zero waste through the precautionary principle, returning to the vendor, leasing, renting and sharing equipment. We don't always have to get that extra equipment we can share uh, in, in, our, in our towns, in our cities, reducing packaging, reusable shipping containers, buying recycled, buying remanufactured and purchasing dur durables, and wherever possible, buy less toxic products. Here are some key steps for businesses, institutions, make a commitment, document materials discarded, identify service opportunities where we could do better, prepare a zero waste plan. Everybody needs to do a little bit for zero waste planning and get buy-in from the stakeholders. The difference between zero waste planning and solid waste planning or integrated waste management planning is that it involves the whole community, the business community, all your workforce. Implement and then pledge for continuous improvement. We want you to know where in your business you are creating excess materials, either waste recycling or compost and design it out of the system. There are typically nine areas of a uh, business where materials can be produced and where they can be reproduced, they can also be reduced. And then know your policies and programs. One of the greatest ways to reduce the volume and toxicity of waste is through contracting for zero waste services, reducing container sizes and frequencies, um, purchasing for zero waste, and making sure all of your employees are part of the solution. And lastly, we ask you to take on the promotion training and leading. We, um, just as we've heard from Dr. Bronner's, we can expand that throughout uh, our businesses. And now here coming back and giving back to the community and sharing best practices. Uh, we uh, really appreciate um, the leadership of the businesses and service providers that are participating today. We um, acknowledge and support your leadership. And lastly, I wanted to give a, a shout out. Uh, Devin is here from the Northern California Recycling Association uh, Schools Committee, K-12 Schools Committee. And just like other businesses and institutions, schools can play a part of this too. So NICRA and CRA and SWANA are co-sponsoring a free webinar on Thursday. I'll put the link in the chat and you can learn again from business leaders. In this case, it will be school leaders on how to recycle and compost and get ready for um, complying with uh, AB 827, which requires source separation. So that's the presentation, Rick, back to you. I will stop sharing.